USC adds defense on National Signing Day, while a recruit abandons UCLA over Chip Kelly drama. All is quiet on the trade front for both the Lakers and the Clippers, and LAFC lose a key part of a team that reached two MLS Cup Finals. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and start for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So it is February 8th, 2024. I am very much groggy because I've been staying up a good chunk of the night going through things like NBA trade rumors. There, it's all crap. It's all crap, but whatever. Let's lighten the mood and talk LA. And if you like being the know about LA sports, please click the like button. Please click the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that, it'll let you know we drop new content. Sharing is caring, let people know we exist, and by all means, comment, because I do try to get back with you guys. So before we go through the news and notes, a look at the scoreboard. James Harden scored 19 points, and the Clippers, the number one team in the Western Conference, celebrated that number one ranking eh, by losing to New Orleans, 117 to 106. We're going to talk a little more about the Clippers in just a moment. Meanwhile, Sebastian Max scores 21 points. The Bruins have won six of their last seven games by defeating Stanford 82 to 74. Also, Isaiah Collier returned for the Trojans. He scored 20 points. Totally didn't matter. Cal beat him 83 to 77. The Trojans are nine and 14. Meanwhile, today, uh, Denver is gonna be playing the Lakers at seven o'clock. Now, here is something that you may have never imagined with a Lincoln Riley coach team, but USC went defense heavy on National Signing Day. Who'd have thunk that? They edged up to 17th in the national rankings according to 24-7 Sports. They added two more recruits yesterday, linebacker Jaden Walker from Michigan and corner Isaiah Rubin, a four-star recruit from Los Alamitos High. Now, Walker is a surprise in that they flipped him. He was originally going to go to Michigan State, and the knock on him is he needs to put on some muscle. The bounty for the Trojans, class of 2024, is 22 recruits. 13 of them play defense, which is a massive change of approach. I mean, for example, the Trojans last year, they only signed eight people on the defensive side of the ball. And I will grant you, that the long-term outlook for the Trojans' offensive line is a bit questionable. And I will also add that in a big surprise, Lincoln Riley did not land a quarterback in this cycle, which is very strange for him. But if you want to get a little bit of a sigh of relief if you're a Trojans fan, Yahoo Sports is reporting that five-star quarterback commit Julian Lewis, class of 2025, said a recent side trip to Georgia did not make him waver in his commitment to coming to USC. Here is a blast from the past, and by blast, I mean something coming out of your intestinal tract. Former Trojans defensive coordinator, Alex Grinch, who landed a gig coaching safeties over at Wisconsin after he was run out of LA, spoke with The Athletic about his departure, quote, I think what happens is when you don't have success that you expect, that you can circle it, highlight it, and that leaves a bad taste in your mouth, but it also creates a chip on your shoulder. I'm not sure there'd be anyone in the country with a bigger chip than what I have. Oh, really? Because I can think of at least one guy with a bigger chip on his shoulder. He played quarterback for USC last year. Do you remember him? You cost him a shot at the college football playoffs because of your incompetence, Coach Grinch, because you were too locked in in your narrow-minded way of blitzing on every single down that Caleb Williams had to drop 50 points every single week in order for the Trojans to have a single shot at winning the game. And it's not just Caleb Williams having a bigger chip on his shoulder. Imagine all the players who decided, wow, I can't play under this Grinch dude. Now they have something to prove to try to salvage their careers. They have a bigger chip on their shoulder. What about Lincoln Riley, who had an absolute pristine reputation before he 
displayed the loyalty of a true friend to you, but you did not even bother to consider thinking that the way you were coaching a game was wrong. This is the problem that I have with Alex Grinch. He always talks a good game, like he's like quoting from Tony Robbins or any of these other self-help guys about how you have to get better all the time and this, that, and the other. Oh, he talks a good game, but nowhere in talking that good game is any sort of self-reflection. It's one thing to say that you have to get better, but how? What did you learn, Alex Grinch? Because there's nothing in that quote that says you learned anything, that you did anything wrong. Because from where I'm sitting, I could tell you what you did wrong. For example, you could have trusted the bigger defensive linemen instead of relying so heavily on smaller linemen for speed D. Because they got overwhelmed at the line of scrimmage. Maybe you shouldn't have blitzed on every single down, which left all of your defensive backs out on an island every single play at the risk of getting burned for massive gains for the opposing team. Maybe you shouldn't have cheated a safety up, which left the deep middle of the field wide open. Nothing like that. Oh, no, 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 no. But no, you have a big chip. Alex Grinch, guys. Alex Grinch. Meanwhile, UCLA finished 86th in the National Signing Day rankings for 24-7 sports with just 10 recruits landed. 10. Now look, guys, if you're a Bruins fan, I get it. I do. UCLA under Chip Kelly has largely ignored traditional high school recruiting and has tried to build teams through the transfer portal. But I have to ask you something. In your private moments, do you kind of cringe a little? Just a little. Would you like to feel a little cringier, a little queasier if you're a Bruins fan? Their recruiting class is so bad that they are behind some of the small schools, the alleged cupcakes that Kelly recently scheduled. For example, they played Coastal Carolina last year. None of us knew what the hell a Chanticleer was. They're ranked over UCLA in the National Signing Day. They're 80th. South Alabama played UCLA two years ago. Ranked over UCLA at 85th. And speaking of Kelly, you could easily argue that these rumors about him leaving the Bruins for an NFL offensive coordinator gig may have played into their recruiting woes. Keona Wilhite is a three-star defensive line recruit from Tucson, Arizona. He was originally slated to go to Washington, flipped to UCLA because the Huskies lost their coach. Now Will Height flipped again. He committed to Nebraska on Wednesday, and when asked, Will Height told the Omaha World Herald, quote, I saw that and thought, ah, this is going to be another Washington situation, unquote. So Chip Kelly, once again, costs UCLA. The NBA trading deadline is at noon, and it is abundantly clear that the league thus far is not buying what the Lakers are selling, in particular D'Angelo Russell. And as we previously discussed, you're going to have to offer an all-star to pry Austin Reeves out of Rob Palinka's fingers. We have in columns two and three of this board, right in the middle, the 19 names that the scribes are swearing the Lakers are moving heaven and earth to get. I'm extremely skeptical. And by the way, moments before I started taping, the latest misfire from the scribes came out. The Lakers will not be trading for Gordon Hayward. He's going to Oklahoma City instead. Look, if the Lakers or Clippers make a major trade, I will file a special report. But if it's for something like a backup small forward who averages like four points a game, I'm going to enjoy the rest of the afternoon off. Have you heard of a guy named Bill Simmons? He was once considered this great sports intellect, the avant-garde, cutting-edge scribe. He created a website called Grantland that he parlayed into an ESPN gig. And now, of course, he's fabulously wealthy. Now, I don't mind whatever you have in your bank account, to be honest. I'm not a player hater like that. 
But what I do mind is that he is claiming, quote, I'm officially offended on behalf of Lakers fans, unquote, because of all these passive aggressive comments and tweets from LeBron James about, oh, you got to, you know, he's not saying you have to upgrade the team, but he's strongly implying it. Oh, I'm officially offended. To which I say, Bill Simmons, you're from Boston, up yours. Bill Simmons would gladly drink from a chalice filled with LeBron James's spittle if it meant the Celtics would get their 18th title with him on the roster. So no, I don't buy this, oh, I'm offended. I'm officially offended about Laker fans. I don't care if you're officially or unofficially offended. You can officially kiss my entire purple and gold behind. I don't care what you think about Laker fans. Meanwhile, Brian Windbag of ESPN, I mean Brian Windhorse, says that one of the reasons that the Clippers have had issues trying to find a forever home for P.J. Tucker is because there's a player option on his contract and Tucker would be expected to pick it up. After all, it is another $11 million for a 39-year-old. Gee, that's a sound investment. Meanwhile, Paul George said the Clippers don't really need to add anything to the roster. Uh, you guys don't play any defense. Good luck trying to drop 130, 140 points in the playoffs. I don't necessarily buy into that statement. Now, if you do, that's fine. You're more than welcome to tell me I'm wrong. Just saying. LAFC have lost yet another key player. Midfielder Kellen Acosta is heading to the Chicago Fire. Now, this loss was actually anticipated. It's strange, but it's anticipated because LAFC didn't even make an attempt to keep the U.S. national team player. He played two years in L.A. He helped guide the team to the MLS Cup Finals each, in each of the last two seasons. And if you want to explain that to me, if you're an LAFC fan, I'm all ears. But I can't find a legit reason to let that guy go. MLSsoccer.com listed what it considered the best transactions of the offseason. And uh, let's just say LAFC didn't make the positive side of the ledger. For example, Portland was credited. They grabbed goaltender Maxime Crapo from LAFC. And don't get me wrong. I understand that LAFC wound up getting a goalie from the Premier League, Hugo Loris. That's not a bad idea. And I can't blame Portland for going out of their way to get Crapo because last year their goalie was David Beckham. As a Galaxy fan, one sympathizes. But I don't necessarily think LAFC had the best of off seasons. I have a love-hate relationship with the website Turf Show Times, which covers the Rams. If you're a longtime viewer of this program, you know that. But I will happily give credit where it's due. The site is claiming that the Rams will have maybe, maybe, two cap casualties this offseason. In other words, players who get cut simply because they make too much money. Three players on the roster make more than $20 million a year, but let's be real. There's no way the Rams are getting rid of Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, or Aaron Donald. Not happening. There's also four players who make a minimum of $5 million next year. They are predicting out of those four players that offensive linemen Brian Allen and Joe Noteboom are the ones who are probably on the chopping block. Particularly Allen, he's the easier one to get rid of due to whatever the language is in his contract. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Talk to me about National Signing Day for the Trojans or Bruins. Tell me if you think the Scribes might actually get one of these 19 names correct. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We're talking LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll try to come back later today if the Lakers or Clippers make a major deal. And if not, we'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Cortel Queso production. Take care.